So anyone have an idea about how to tip the string so that it will not, so I'll get no torque from anything? Yeah. Um, we were thinking that we want the tension to be at an angle such that when you like draw it out, it'll end up going through the axis of rotation because then it is just going through that. Fantastic. Great job. So let me try to draw that here. So we've been working with this point because it makes our life much easier. All the forces except one pass through that point. The line of action passes through that point. So her suggestion is make the force of tension pass through that point as well. And now none of them produces a torque. That's got to be the situation for equilibrium. Do you agree? <coughs> equilibrium. Excellent. Okay, so what we're going to develop today is the way of figuring out not just which way it will go, but how fast. But any any questions of yeah, Ruth. So aha, uh -huh. Ruth wants to know. Well, wait a second. If I were to pull on the yo-yo this way, which way is it going to go? <laughs> and so, which way is friction? This way or that way? So now I have tension pulling this way, right? If, if the yo-yo is going that way, what can you tell me about the net horizontal force? Got to be that way. But I have tension that's going this way and friction may be going back the other way, but not as big as the tension force. She has a great question. Let me repeat that. Why is friction going this way? Because she thought friction opposes motion. Static friction what? Yeah. So let's now take away, let's put it on ice, right? Let's just put it on a frictionless surface and ask what, I can't do that for you here, but what would happen in that case? Exactly. So I see people, mm, yeah, okay. So it's going to start spinning around because there is no friction to provide a force left and right, so therefore it can't be moving left or right. So friction will do what it needs to do. Static friction will attempt to make it so that this surface, the surface of the yo-yo, does not slide with respect to the table, right? Now, if put it on ice and pull straight up, what direction will this part of the yo-yo want to move in? It's going to want to turn around this way. So it's going to try to move to the right. So friction is going to apply itself to try to prevent the relative motion of one surface with respect to the other. So I think in that case, the force of friction on the yo-yo has to be opposed to the direction that the yo-yo would move on its own without that friction. Yeah, Marcy. Um, it's not I missed that. What about the equilibrium past the center? Are we talking about this picture? 
this one. So the, the string is wrapped around the spindle, and it comes off tangent there. And I'm just, maybe I should dot this. So this is just the line of action of the, the, the string force. Yeah? Uh, different radius with respect to what? <laughs> like this? <laughs> so if, I mean, the way that the string works, if it's wrapped around a round spindle, is that it's going to have to come off tangent to that spindle, and so it's always going to be op operating at the same radius with respect to the center, not necessarily, of course, with respect to the point of contact, if that's the point that we choose to analyze. One more, and then we should move on. Yeah. Is that the question? Why am I allowed to slide a force along its line of action? So all along the line of action, I would get, let's see, the same perpendicular component. So let's consider a force that is applied this way. So in this case, our perpendicular would be this distance. Agreed? And it doesn't matter where I move the force along this line, it's still going to be our perpendicular. If you like, I have to take the angle theta between the radial vector and the force vector, and I calculate the torque by R F times the sine of that angle. But no matter where I put the force, So I'll put a prime to indicate that's, that's when it's moved to a different position. I have R times the sine of the angle, so this radial distance times the sine, well, that gives me the opposite length, and that's the same, no matter where I move the point along that line. Do you agree? So as long as I don't change the magnitude of the force, I would get the same value of R sine theta, and so therefore the same torque. That's what justifies allowing me to move the point of application anywhere along the line. Very useful. Okay.